Okay, so we've spent some time making a bit of a plan for developing tone on one side and intonation on the other. So who would like to go first? Yeah, Devin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, so for warm up, we've got elbow drop dropping exercises. Good. So Robin has flexed for elbow. Excellent. Um, bow triangle exercise to like keep the bow straight. Not. That's the one we saw me doing the lesson, B square triangle. Oh yeah, yeah, B square triangle, yeah. Yeah, and then both flips. I think the okay. thing with the B square triangle that's really good, just make sure that you um, explain it, because I remember when you did it, I was just like, what is she, like, <laughs> even just when you say it, like, B square triangle, it doesn't make any sense to someone who doesn't yeah. know what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, lots of things don't for us, but just yeah. don't assume that it's something that, yeah, people know about. Mm -hmm. Excellent, yeah. good. Um, and then pieces to prepare clinical team. I thought long, long ago. So up good. until now, have we made any sound yet? No, this is no. all science Okay, time. so what can you put in between making no sound and playing a piece? Um, well, actually, no, we've made sound with the, the, the B square triangle because you kind of have to do that on the string for sort of the context. So we yeah. can work on that. Um, and, but not for the others, I don't think. So the V square triangle is the first time we look to make sound. Okay. Um, I think if you're doing a session on making wonderful tone, mm. it's nice to start with something that makes wonderful tone rather than something that just you have to have your bow on and move and make a kind of uh, uh, <laughs> just mm. to see where you are in the bow. So what could you do that would just start off this imaginary group of 100 students from book three to five? Start with tonalization. Could do, yes. Or something else, Joe. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, or even more simple. Open A's. Oh, yeah, open strings. Yeah, oh, just open, like, yeah, open A's, open D's, or mm -hmm. like, you know, treble D, like mid A3, something. And how would you do that, Joe? What would you do? I would show it. So I can copy them. Can you grab your violin and just show me what you would do? So we've been talking about the square triangle for the five now. Um, we've gone through. We would be before this though. Oh, before that. Um, what do you think makes the most ringing sound to start off with that you can then try and imitate later? What kind of bow stroke? Anyone in the room? Exactly. Yeah, a retake. Yes, you don't want to call a retake circle to book five students. <laughs> yes, so. a retake. Yeah, oh. exactly. Let me go the other way. If you're the other side of the circle, push Good. Through. Yeah, exactly. So my turn, your turn. Big sound, just listen, like talk about the resonance in the room. If you've got a room that's very ringy, like, you know, can you hear how long it resonates for? And if you've got a room that's quite dead, like, oh, we can't make it ring very much. But imagine if you were in a cathedral, like that sound would bounce around, all of those kind of like imagery, bringing the, bringing the sound to life kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Great, good. And then V square triangle, you're thinking more technically about tucking the bow straight, good. Yep. And then... And then... Um... So then that would be a good place, I think, to put tonalization. Right. Yeah. After, so you've made the sound, you've listened, you've excited everyone about how wonderful it can sound, even just open A, mm -hmm. or maybe you've done some Gs, some Ds, mm -hmm. um, and then you can do tonalization. If the retakes are going well, or you don't think they're quite ready to do it in a piece, you can do retake tonalization, that's also really nice. Yeah. But just it kind of gets their arms moving properly and really brings the biggest sound with the least kind of difficulty because it's not like how do you stop it and then it's not starting on an up bow all those things that kind of reduce the quality of the sound because they're just slightly more tricky when I do tonalisation I tend to say to them pick a number between 2 and 6 mm -hmm. or something and um, we're going to do each note well count of those but we're going to have a rest of a beat between each one so you can listen to them because otherwise I just see more for it than I actually yeah. listen so I will then practice with them, making them stop. Let's see if we can stop together for the beats and make sure actually we've got that space. Yeah. And then we put it into tonalization as a whole. Nice. Great. Yeah, yeah I think that's brilliant. And if you've got a bigger, like obviously the bigger the group gets, like this is a kind of 
make-believe situation, it's unlikely that you will probably ever have a hundred kids in front of you with just you. But it does happen. So if it were to happen, the things that make it easier for them to listen are things like retakes, because you have to take your phone away because you're going to do a retake, rather than trying to get a massive bunch of kids to stop together and listen for the ring in the second beat before you go on again. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So it's just a useful thing to think like, big tone, retakes first, and then you build up from there. Mm. Um, great, what else have you got? Um, uh, yeah, in terms of other pieces, so if we call them on the go, Judas, tonalization, and then later on, lullabies, and G minor, second movement. Lovely, yeah. And, and what would you do with the kids who aren't able to play, as you lose kids each level, yeah. what would you do? Um, for most of the stuff that needs reading is going to do, you wouldn't use that many kids because it's stuff that you do from yeah. book, book three. But um, if I was doing the G minor, obviously there's not a lot of children to play that. Mm -hmm. So I would ask them to, to at least sit and listen to the ring and put their hands up if they hear one. Perfect, because it's wonderful. Because it's a G minor, there should be quite a few. Yeah. Be a um, and if we were doing the lullabies, Something that I would probably even do with children is just get them to pair up and touch the scrolls and see if they can feel the vibrations. Very nice. Yeah, excellent. Or they can put their fingers underneath the yeah, yeah underneath the violins. Brilliant. And then the other thing about any kind of planning that you do, like this 15-20 minutes, you could probably do 15-20 minutes and finish by playing Judas. Like yeah. that would probably that be fun. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's like you know, especially if you've got lots and lots of kids takes a while so it's always good to plan more but be prepared to lose or know what you would lose if you're looking at the clock and thinking oh my god I've only got five minutes left do you want to play Judas or do you want to play G minor and do the thing with listening and feeling for the for the vibrations mm. it's up to you there are equal equally good things about both but just like when you're planning a session like that that's the other thing to bear in mind it's like okay if my timing doesn't go according to plan what my what's my filler and what's my core activity Excellent, um, well done. I think the other thing was to do the other exercise, which was a bit me, um, to do Judas in second position. Oh, I think that would be a disaster. It would be such fun, though. <laughs> in a 15 minute session, not so much. Yeah. In a 45 minute group lesson, totally. Yeah. 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 You want always, obviously, to be, sorry, try not to use the word obviously, but I think, it's, I think this is a fair use of obviously. You want to make sure that you're setting the kids up to succeed. Yeah. So if you've got three minutes left and you say, right, let's try Judas in second, and it sounds disgusting, they'll all go away being like, Ugh. <laughs> Whereas if you've got 40 minutes and you can spend, you know, 20 minutes on Judas in second and then do the rest of the lesson, then boom, brilliant. Good. Also turning the bow around. Yeah, why, does that, why is that a good thing to do apart from the fact that it's fun? It's sort of like a demonstration of more what the tone should sound like and then you compare it to that weight distribution isn't it getting that idea of being into the string yeah, yeah. it get it does it doesn't often give you the tone that you would want because they're not used to it so it just goes mm. weird and scratchy yeah. but it does give you the sense of having a heavier tip mm -hmm. and so then like if you lift the bow off the violin like that you could feel okay that's what it should feel like mm. and then you put it back around and can you make it feel like that the same yeah rather than listen to this tone this is what you need to try and Right. Yeah. <laughs> maybe or maybe not does that make sense yeah great good job team tone well done all right team intonation well just about how we do the demonstration there um, by the violin vibration oh when you play why don't you do it together yeah i don't just stand up do just stand up 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 yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 So, I'm going to ask you, I think because you're pressing your hand here, mm -hmm. can you each put your hand over here? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. Does this feel different? Thank you. 
attention to that. Okay. But you can do that in the kindergarten. That's great. How could you develop it? Um, <laughs> yes, you know. Well, I don't know. My, my, my brain I is expecting you to know immediately. Yeah. Think um, about how you could develop it. So, I would pair them up. So, when you stand facing each other like this, mm -hmm. um, you can touch rolls like that, if that makes sense. If, if the two of us did it, oh, you could yeah. do that. <laughs> I've done it. It's, it okay. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> Dangerous. Yeah. What, could you, what could you develop now, just doing exactly what you've been doing? with them doing exactly what they've been doing with you doing something different? Um, oh gosh. Here's a clue. You've played your open strings. Yes. You've talked about the difference between what they can feel on E, A, D and G. Yeah. What's the next step? Wrinkles. Hmm. Before Even that. more simple? Uh, long bows versus short bows? Could be. May I? Yes. You may. So, put your hands wherever you like. <laughs> printed it off the internet um, and cut them out and it might not work on my violin because it's so resonant on all of the notes but the idea is you can put it on the G string between the end of the finger chord and where you're going to bow so you have to have really tiny ones if you're going to use them on really tiny violins and then for example you can say okay on F sharp can you see there's enough resonance to make it buzz but then, yeah. I <laughs> um, and obviously, Kate, <laughs> if you're not playing tune, it, they won't be able to make it fly. You have to fly in that way. Fly you! Okay, it's, flown, it's flown off the wrong place. But you know, you can, you can find the full resonance to make them fly off. Ooh. And they like that because it's cute. <laughs> the bats are good for Halloween and butterflies are always good. You could do birds. 
bees. That would be cute because they buzz. Yeah. Oh, string. Um, I just also thought I would bring this. I can't remember if I've shown it to you already or not. It was Rick's and I found it in a load of stuff that he left behind. But when I was in Sweden teaching the little ones who didn't have such good English, it was excellent to have. <laughs> just, just to have funny and like if they did something wrong, the clapping goes on a bit too long, but anyway. They loved it. They thought it was so funny. <laughs> it's quite funny. Um, yeah, so it was just like a, a fun thing to do to make the lessons a bit more <laughs> accessible. <laughs> okay. I might lose my students. <laughs> yeah, you have to be careful because they sometimes do this crap up so much they lose the ability to function. <laughs> okay, good. Team intonation. Uh, let's warm up with 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 an Judas. Lovely. And also G major, and then step forward when I hear a ring note. G major what? Uh, scale. Scale. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. And then you obviously explain the ring note foundation. You know that. Yeah. Good. And then we were going to go back to Judas and do the same thing, stepping forward when I hear. Great. And then, because they're books three to five, we were thinking they need to be able to get the same quality of intonation in different positions. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do the G major in the third position, um, and then swap the scale. Yeah. In the third position again, just to bring the ring notes, um, and then move on to a different. Do you think, can you, is there something else you could use instead of doing the scale again? Because so far you've done the G major scale twice and Judas twice. Can you, can you substitute them out so that it feels we've a bit more varied? In third position, and this would be one of the position. Yeah, but that's two scales and it could only be one octave if it's, I mean, it's fine. It's just, there are other things that you could use. Yeah, what do you think you could start with instead of the Judas kit? Tone vibration. Yes, or? Everyone's favourite. Twinkle in. Huh? In G. In G. Thank you, well done. Twinkle in G would be an excellent start. Um, and then the scale. Because then also, if you're going to do it in first position, you can do two octaves. Um, and then Judas. Doing Judas twice is fine, great. And then we would go into. I don't know why. Long, long ago. And we thought we could play. We could just play a game. Yeah. Um, look at. We had two different ideas. One was can the parents tell if we're in first or third position based on the quality of the intonation. Okay, very good. Um, um, another was sharks in the water, but with like more extreme, uh, more kind of subtle. Yeah. Good, excellent. And um, then another was murder mystery, and we kind of uh, tap some kids so that they're out of tune, and the rest of the group, while playing the same song together, have to figure out who it is. <laughs> they close their eyes. <laughs> well, no. Okay, that sounds really fun, but if you had 100 students, would be quite tricky to A, pick out one, and B, you wouldn't hear if there's one person out of tune. So what could you do? Let's just imagine quickly you were in a group lesson instead of 100 students. If you had 15, you still wouldn't necessarily be able to hear who's out of tune, but how could you make it so that you would be able to work out who was the murderer? Not make more of them in a cluster. Yes, that's a good idea. Or can you think of something else that would mean that they could hear who was out of tune? Um... Make it more obvious they're out of tune. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm thinking about is you could get them to take turns. So you could get them in a in a circle and all play, you know, for one bar of twinkle and then whoever it was mm -hmm. would be out of tune. But I think you have to be slightly careful with that because if someone plays out of tune and it's not them, yeah. they're gonna be embarrassed. So I think I love the sharks in the water, that's a great option. And then I think um, 
a turn-taking game would be good if you're talking about a smaller group, but maybe less kind of like with a definite you're wrong or you're right, but just like thinking about like listening to it, maybe get people to put their hands up or you know, show the intonation out of the hand with their fingers, something like that that's not gonna be so much like, you're the murderer. Oh no, I'm not, I'm just out of tune. Yeah? Lovely, brilliant. Anything else? That's definitely 15 minutes worth already. Uh, we said also to explain the hand contraction up before the walk, so one of you. Yeah. Nice, so how would you do that apart from, you'd explain it, and then what could you do that would help? Sure. Good. And what could they do that would practice it? Well, Being aware of it. You could say that you need the scales to feel different, but what do you want to ask? Yeah, so I think you could do like, um, for example, you could carve up the G major and do, think about, okay, how does it feel down here? <laughs> more close together with one, two, and three, even though three and four are still the best friends. You could definitely do that. Um, or something like um, twinkle again, like, right, let's try it here. 